Uh, hello, uh, good morning, afternoon or night, depending on where you might be around the world. Uh, on behalf of EMD International, I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar on the introduction to changes in WinPro 3.0. Uh, I am Nathan Curry from EMD International, and I will be your presenter today as well. Um, there are a lot of changes in the new version of WinPro, a lot. Uh, we have a series of webinars each week for the next few weeks uh, that will be covering the more in-depth changes. Uh, however, here we will be covering the basic interface, uh, GUI, and functionality topics, uh, the core changes to the way that you interface with WinPro. Um, the presentation should only take about 20 minutes, uh, and there will be a short question and answer session at the end. Uh, followed by a very brief summary at the very end. Um, so we ask that you please submit your questions in writing in the questions section to the bottom of your go-to interface. Uh, you can expand the question section by clicking on the plus symbol just to the left of the word questions, then type uh, your text in the window that appears there below it. Um, questions will be answered uh, during the Q&A session at the end. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to accept questions once the Q&A session has begun, uh, but don't worry about it. If we don't get to your question, um, we will be creating a Q&A summary of all questions submitted, and the link uh, for that summary and for the recording of this webinar uh, will come out to you uh, later this evening. So all that being said, uh, let's get started. So the first thing is, of course, to show you the um, intro screen of WinPro. Bring it over here onto the main screen. <clears throat> of course, your language choices pops up as, as per usual. But then as soon as WinPro opens, you will notice that we have now incorporated uh, the Project Explorer into the opening window. So, of course, if you've got a lot, you know, a lot of projects, it will show your project at cursor uh, like it has before, but now all in one window. Uh, we also have a summary of the projects that you've been working on over here in the top left, and you can expand uh, just the core uh, details about any given project. So it's a you know, good one-stop one way of uh, looking at the overview on your projects. Uh, then here in the middle, we have some uh, quick, quick keys, quick buttons. Um, create an, a new project with Project Wizard. Uh, I will be dis demonstrating that a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, create a project in the old way that you're used to, and then a uh, link to go directly to our website. Uh, and then we now have the RSS feed down here in the bottom left uh, for news and information about WinPro 3. Uh, you can also go up to Help and say Check for Updates. And uh, that will contact our server and tell you whether you have the latest build or not. So. Okay, so now we shall move into uh, 3.0 interface itself. So I'm going to open the demo project of, of uh, Abletoft, um, which is in the samples folder. Okay, let's see here. Uh, apparently the screen is not showing correctly. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Apparently uh, GoTo had the wrong screen. Um, so I'm going to go back here to the uh, to the, the interface and I'll go over this again. Uh, but you see the Project Explorer is uh, now integrated uh, and then you have a list of your projects here in the top left and you can expand each project for some core details about your project. Uh, some hotkey buttons that I was just discussing here in the middle, the RSS feed down here at the bottom left. And again you can go to help and say check for updates and it will tell you if you have the latest build. So. Okay, hopefully <laughs> everything seems to be uh, looking correct now. So uh, again, I will open the Abletoft uh, demo project, uh, which is in your samples folder. If you have a 3.0, I believe it's in 2.9 as well. Give this a second to load. And the first thing you will notice is that we have done away with the two window uh, way of working. So now what you see is just all one window. Uh, we've incorporated both the calculations and modules window with the maps and objects window. And you can scroll between them here in the middle on these two tabs. So you have your objects and then your calculations uh, modules. Now we've also added uh, a lot more abil or ability to rearrange uh, your working panes uh, so you can set it up uh, the way that, that you like visually best in, in the way that you work. Uh, so I'll go through some of those changes here. Um, of course, you know, essentially have the window uh, divided into three sections. You have the section here with the maps, you have the objects and or calculations modules, and then you have the result layer object layer. 
So of course these little black arrows will expand or retract within that section, depending on which section you're in. So the modules, and let's try the maps here, expand that, expand down. Now we've added a new function that these little pins will basically force that particular pane to be a tab. So for example, calculations, I click that, and you see calculations now becomes a mouse over tab. So if I mouse over it, it'll show up, I mouse away, and it will disappear. So that can be helpful for the things you just need to take a quick look at, but you don't want them cluttering up your workspace. So again, I can mouse over it, and I can hit the pin again, and it will bring it back. Uh, one thing I should say, too, is that up here, if you choose EMD default, it will default back to this layout that you see. So that is uh, your best friend in, in getting used to working uh, with the panes and the new uh, ways that we have in, in setting them up. Uh, if you get lost, uh, you can always you know, snap back to the default. So for example, I'll click a few buttons here, get things kind of moved around, and then I'll go to EMD default. And yeah, it takes a second, but you see it snaps back. Now, in addition, we also have the ability for you to define your own layout and save it as a, uh, as a, a default of your own. So, for example, I will uh, make some modifications here, bring that out free-floating. I'll expand the result layers, and I'll say add to drop-down list, and I'll say call it webinar test. Say OK. And you see I now have webinar test in my drop-down list. So I'll go back to EMD default, and it will take a second here to snap into place. Then, okay, now that it's in place, I can go back to my webinar test. And again, it'll take you just a second to snap into place. So, uh, yeah, so you have the ability to save as many iterations as you'd like, and you also can export as file. So it, once you uh, set it up in the way that you prefer working, you can export it for use on another computer or export it to give to colleagues if you all want to work in a similar fashion in the office, etc. So those are the new ways with which to interface with WinPro. I'll go back to EMD default here. Let it snap into place. And now moving on to maps. Uh, maps used to be a drop-down list, but now we have them as tabs down here at the bottom. So it makes it a lot easier for seeing the particular maps you have and also scrolling between them. They load much faster this way. And you can load as many maps as you want. If you run out of space down here on the bar, then the standard Windows scroll arrows will appear and you just scroll to the uh, tab that you want. And then the next thing to show you is um, the object layers. Uh, we've revised this a little bit as well. Uh, the first thing that we have done is we've added folders, or what we call object uh, layer groups. So you can right click you know, anywhere there in the empty space and say add layer group. And just call it, well, call it test layer. And then you can either right click and say add layer, and just call it new layer, or you can drag layers down as well. And then that gives you the ability to you know, expand and collapse groups of layers. So if you have several layout iterations and you don't need to look at them, you can close it. So it makes it a lot more uh, you know, visually organized for working. Um, in addition, we now have uh, sort of an expanded version of the um, objects matrix. You can look at uh, you click this all and it'll show you every single object. Sorry, let me go here to the objects tab. It'll show you every single object in the project. Or you can choose just a particular type of object. So for example, new WTGs. Uh, close these two so it's a little easier to see. And it'll show you all the WTGs regardless of all the new WTGs, regardless of what layer they're in. So this is again a good way of uh, keeping a track of like if you have multiple you know, layouts or multiple uh, medio objects, things like that, and you can get an overview of them all at, at, in one go. So, and of course now that the windows are combined, so are the options. 
So it used to be that you go up here to options and it was two different sets depending on which window you were in. But now we have them all combined here in one options. And we've also made it a little more convenient um, for managing your search paths. So if a file gets lost or separated or you need to add a new search path, you can do so here for the entire project and make it a little, little easier, faster, and a little bit more convenient. And then the next thing to tell you is probably one of the most anticipated changes uh, that we've ever had. One second here, let me turn on a layer so I can sh give you an example here, the blank map. So it's a little easier to look at. So probably the most anticipated change uh, that we've had over the years is undo. <laughs> and that's right, we now finally have undo, standard Windows undo. Um, so I'll give you a demonstration of that. Uh, the standard uh, control keys work as well. But I'll take this turbine and I'll move it out. And then you have up here, you have your undo, your history list, and of course redo once you have one or more undo iterations. So I'll click undo. Of course, ask me if I'm sure. Yes, I am. And see, so it'll snap back. And then I can redo as well. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, then in addition, you can jump back pretty easily uh, between several different iterations. So it's one move, two move, three moves. I'll go to the history list. I'll go down three moves. Are you sure? Yes. See, it'll snap back. I'll do it one more time. There we go. Um, the history list will show only the last 10 iterations, but if you jump, for example, I'll jump down to iteration 10. Might take it a second here. Then it'll load another 10. So theoretically, the number of undos is unlimited. Uh, in, in reality, it's limited only by your hard drive space because WinPro will use uh, your hard drive to, to save the, uh, the undo iterations. Um, so it, it is conceivable if you have a very large project with really heavy calculations, you could run into um, a limit. But for all due purposes, it should be relatively unlimited. So I know that's been one of the most requested changes, and <laughs> we finally have it. So I think then uh, that is the end of what I needed to show you for um, just the general uh, GUI, the general uh, interface. Um, so now I'll give you a demonstration of the Project Explorer, which is basically just a new way we have of helping you load all the data from online sources for your project all in one go to make it way faster and, and getting started and getting your project set up. So I will say new with wizard. And don't need to save that. And I will call it, uh, let me see, move to the correct folder. And just call it wizard test. <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, pick a location here in uh, northwestern Denmark. And of course, you know, the, you, this is the project properties window that you're used to seeing. You choose your coordinate system, your project and site. Then down here at the bottom, there's a checkbox that says start project wizard after OK. So make sure that's checked. Select OK. And give it a second here to load. And you can see here um, this, the list of what you can obtain from online sources. So we have uh, background maps, elevation data, roughness data, climate data, and even turbine import for production uh, database for countries like Denmark and, and uh, Germany and that, that have production, uh, that have databases for producing turbines. Um, but we'll forego that for right now. That's kind of specialized. So I'll move through each tab and show you the, uh, the setup. So background maps, um, let's choose OpenStreetMap. It's a little faster and easier to load. You can set the, uh, the width and the height. Uh, once you hit OK, you'll get the chance to, um, to scroll and zoom the map as you normally do when downloading from online sources. Uh, let's move on to height data. Uh, the default is the SRTM. We now have a new resolution. Uh, this one arc second is a 30 meter resolution compared to the uh, older 90 meter resolution. So that's a significant uh, upgrade as well. You can set the uh, width and height here. I'll leave it at default for now. And roughness data. Um, 
of course, depending on where you are in the world, uh, you will get a different list for each of these, depending on what's available. Uh, so for right now, the default is a Korean land cover uh, for here in Denmark. So I will leave that, and I will leave the default to widths and heights as well. Now, climate data. Uh, definitely want to show you this, uh, the ability to download your long-term data sets, mesoscale data sets, um, as many as you'd like from the start of your project. So I'm going to choose Mira, and the default is to, to download the four points closest to your project center. Um, but for the sake of, uh, of time, so that it does not take too long, I'll just put one. Of course, you can set the maximum distance, and I'll just download just a couple of years here, so it won't, won't take too long. And so, okay, we should be set up. Now hit OK, and standard accept window. Okay, and then we get the map, open street map. I will zoom out here a little bit, scroll it just a little bit, and say save as BMI. And now it'll begin downloading all the different uh, data that you've selected. And hopefully this should go pretty quick. I've tried to, to minimize the quantity of data so it, it won't, won't take too long. But you'll notice that it um, creates a layer for everything that's named appropriately. So this uh, will definitely, if you're working from online sources, will definitely speed up uh, the process with which you set up your projects. So let me drag this window up here a little bit, uh, this pane up here a little bit. So yeah, you can see you've got your elevation data, which was uh, which was put into an elevation grid object. Uh, if you prefer working in uh, line objects, you can always export that and, and import it into a line object. Uh, you've got your uh, roughness areas, um, and again, you know, you export that into uh, roughness lines, and then your long-term data set, and they all have their appropriately named layers over here to the side. And then the next thing will be um, the advances in the uh, WMS maps functionality. So go back to the project properties, select background maps, and WMS server. So we've kind of expanded uh, the interface with, uh, with map servers um, and the functionality and the ability to define your own uh, servers if we don't have it in our database. So of course depending on where you are in the world it depends on the list that you will see here uh, both in the select layers and in the uh, drop down menu. But you see these three buttons here on the top uh, right you can say add and if you have information about a database that we don't have uh, as a default in WinPro then you can add it here. So um, for the sake of demonstration I'll leave it here at the DTK Court uh, 25 classes and yeah, I'll leave it at the default to 1 to 25,000. And then I'm going to say preview. So hopefully this should load pretty quickly. Yeah, very quickly. Um, you have the choice uh, down here to uh, download a set number of tiles around the project center. Um, so you, for example, you can just download this one tile that you're looking at here, or you can download up to 49 tiles. So for now, I'll choose four. Say save as BMI. Okay, that was pretty quick. So now you see you have your uh, topographic map here in background maps. Say okay. And you'll see it pop up here. Uh, as a tab in your maps now. I'm going to close some of these layers so it's a little easier to look at. Okay. Then another thing too, let me zoom out here a little bit on this map. You can update uh, WMS uh, map very, very quickly um, with this, this new little button here uh, in the middle bar. Just click on that and say, okay, I want to expand this to nine tiles instead of four. Start map download. Hopefully this will not take too long. Should go pretty quick. There we go, very quick. So now it's given me nine more tiles around Project Center. So it's essentially given me all of uh, Northern Denmark. So a very, very quick way of updating your uh, WMS uh, maps, depending on uh, what you need to look at on your site. So, <clears throat> yep. 
so that concludes the uh, presentation portion. As I said, it was pretty quick, uh, just an overview of the basic changes, basic GUI functionality in WinPro and some of the things to make, make it a little easier in working. So uh, give me a second here to expand my questions list and I'll take a few questions here before we end the webinar. So um, let me see. Okay, first question is, why do I get an unable to validate online WinPro will keep functioning for 14 days after which it will return to demo mode? Good question. Um, we are beginning to change the way that we do activations. Uh, it's a step towards uh, allowing you, the user, to have more control over your activations because we know that there are a lot of issues with uh, if a computer breaks down or somebody leaves the company or you know various reasons. You cannot deactivate uh, from one computer with which to move it to another. So this is just the first step in, in, in moving towards making it easier on your side. So it basically just means that once every 14 days you need to uh, open WinPro while you're connected to the net so it can uh, check your activation on our server. Um, and there will be more information about that that will come out uh, here here soon as we work on the next build. Um, okay, let me check the next questions. Uh, let me see. Can you can we open two projects at the same time in version 3.0? Uh, no, unfortunately, you you cannot. Uh, nor can you open you know two versions of WinPro with which to have uh, two projects. Uh, that has been suggested, and I do know that uh, we are working on trying to make that happen. Um, but it's you know a rather intensive uh, program, um, so it, there's a lot of um, issues <laughs> in being able to make that. Uh, a reality so but uh, it is being considered it is definitely being considered um, and let me see here it says are changes now stored automatically um, if you mean uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that if you mean um, uh, the undo iterations uh, yes they are and we still have um, the recovery file as well um, which you know uh, I believe it kind of functions somewhat off of the last time that you hit save um, but between those two even if WinPro crashes you should be able to you know recover uh, you know all or a vast majority of your work um, okay let me see here there's uh, there is a new function on the top bar that is import Google Street View to photo montage what are the details about that function? Um, actually, uh, that will be covered in good detail in the webinar next week, uh, the ZBI and photo montage changes. Um, basically, it's just a way to allow you to make very quick photo montages, very you know, first look photo montages um, by interfacing with Google Street View. So of course, you know that's, uh, the resolution of that and the, the accuracy of that just depends on what is available in Google Street View from the area you're working in. Um, but it's just basically a new a new way to yeah to allow you to make a very quick first look in a photo montage. Uh, but that will be covered in next week's uh, next Tuesday's webinar. So um, let me see. I think I have time for a couple of more questions here. Um, could you clarify which country is available for WMS? I'm working in Portugal and Spain, but it popped up unable to download map every time. Um, well, we're still working on the interfaces to the databases. Uh, they're more stable in certain countries than they are others. Uh, if, if there's a database you know should be um, accessible and it's not working right, then uh, you know, please let us know and, and, and we'll, we can have the IT look at, at why it's not loading. Um, but uh, this is something that, that that IT is updating constantly, so uh, it should become more and more robust uh, as the days go on. So, um, let me see here. The one, let's see. I see there is a new displacement height calculator set up. How does it function? Is it sector wise? And can you explain the settings? Um, well, that actually, yes, it is sector wise. Um, it is uh, basically just a linear. Uh, relationship that's applied um, sector-wise based on what you set for upwind and downwind um, 
sensitivity. Um, we have that actually will be covered in the webinar we have in three weeks time. Um, the new uh, energy calculation method uh, will cover some of that and we do apologize for not having any information up on our website at the moment um, but we are working on that and hopefully within the next week or two we'll have uh, a user's guide to the displacement height calculator um, because there's a, a lot of functionality with that. So let me see here. Um, let me see, where are undos stored and do we have the ability to clear them off our hard disk or do they clear at the end of a session? Um, undos are stored in a subfolder uh, within the WinPro um, project folder in your C drive. Uh, they do clear automatically as soon as you uh, uh, exit WinPro. Uh, it clears the, the entire history. Um, if you do need to clear iterations uh, yourself, uh, then I suggest you just you send us an email and we can we can tell you the specifics of how to do that. Um, but otherwise, it will clear the history each time you close WinPro, um, so that it doesn't uh, you know start cluttering up your uh, hard drive. So, okay, so I think uh, that is time for today's webinar uh, on the new interfaces and functionality changes in WinPro 3.0. Um, when the webinar ends, a close button will appear, uh, will pop up in your GoTo interface. Uh, please press that button and the survey will open in your web browser. It is a very, very short survey and it literally will not take you more than about 30 seconds. Uh, and we would greatly appreciate your feedback. Um, you will also have the ability at the end of the survey to request a uh, limited time trial license for testing uh, 3.0 if you don't already have it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the webinar today uh, and please look forward to some more information from us uh, within the next day or two, uh, including a link to uh, the video of this presentation and to the Q&A summary. And have a good day, evening or night, uh, depending on where you might be around the world. And thanks a lot for your time and attention.